come the English with full power upon us. And more than carefully, it concerns us to answer royally in our defenses. Therefore, the Dukes of Bourbon and Burgundy, of Brabant and Orleans, shall make forth. And you, Prince Dauphin, with all swift dispatch to line and new repair our towns of war with men of courage and means defended. For the English his approaches makes as fierce as waters to the sucking of a gulf. It fits us then to be as provident as fear may teach us out of late examples left by the fatal and neglected English upon our fields. My most redoubted father, it is most meet we arm us against the foe, for war itself should not so dull a kingdom peace itself, though war no no known quarrel war in question, but that defenses, musters, preparations should be maintained, assembled and collected, as war a war in expectation. Therefore I say it is meet we all go forth to view the sick and feeble parts of France, and let us do it with no show of fear. No, with no more than if we heard that England were busy with the wits and Morris dance. For good my liege, she is so idly king, her scepter so fantastically borne by a vain, giddy, shallow, humorous youth, that fear attends her not. Peace, Prince Dauphin. You are too much mistaken in this king. Question your grace the late ambassadors with what great state he heard their embassy. How well supplied in noble counselors. How modest in exception, and withal, how terrible in constant resolutions. And you shall find his vanities forespent, for but the outside of the Roman Brutus, covering discretion with a coat of folly, as gardeners do with ordure cover those roots that shall first spring and be most delicate. Well, it is not so, my lord high constable, but though we think it so, it is no matter. In cases of defense, it is best to weigh the enemy more mighty than he seems. So the proportions of defense are filled, which of a weak and niggardly position do like a miser spoil their coat with scanting a little cloth. Think we, King Harry, strong, and princes look ye strongly armed to meet him. The kindred of him hath been fleshed upon us, and he is bred out of that bloody strain that haunted us in our familiar paths. Witness our too much familiar shame when Cressy battle fatally was struck, and all our princes captive by the hand of that black named Edward, Black Prince of Wales. Whilst his mountain sire on mountain standing up in the air, crowned with a golden sun, saw his heroical seat and smiled to see him mangle the works of nature and deface the patterns that by God and by French fathers had 20 years been made. This is a stem of that victorious stock and let us fear the native mightiness and fate of him. Ambassadors from Harry, King of England, do crave admittance to your majesty. We will give them present audience. Go and bring them. You see this chase is hotly followed, friends. Turn head and stop pursuit. For coward dogs most bend their mouths when what they seem to threaten runs far before them. Good my sovereign, take up the English short and let them know of what a monarchy you are the head. Self-love, my liege, is not so vile a sin as self-neglecting. From our brother of England. From him, and thus he greets your majesty. He wills you, in the name of God Almighty, to divest yourself and lay apart all the borrowed glories by the gift of heaven, by the laws of nature and of nations, longs to him and his heirs, namely the crown, <laughs> and all widespread honors that pertain by custom and the ordinance of times unto the crown of France, that you may know Tis no sinister claim, nor no awkward claim, picked from the wormholes of long vanished days, nor from the dust of oblivion raked. He sends this most memorable line, in every branch truly demonstrated, willing you overlook this pedigree. And when you have found him evenly derived from his most famed of famous ancestors, Edward III, he bids you deliver up your crown and kingdom, indirectly held from him, the native and true challenger. Or else what follows? Bloody constraint. For if you hide the crown, even in your hearts, there he will rake you for it. Therefore, like a tempest, he is coming in thunder and in earthquake like a Jove. For if requiring fail, he will compel. And he bids you 
in the bowels of the Lord. Deliver up your crown and have mercy on the poor souls for whom this hungry war opens its vasty jaws. And on your head, turning the widow's tears, the orphan's cries, the dead men's blood, the privy maiden's groans for fathers, husbands, and betrothed lovers who will surely be swallowed in this controversy. This is his claim, his threatening, and my message. Lest the Dauphin be in presence here, for whom expressly I bring greeting to. For us, we will consider on this further. Tomorrow you shall bear our full intent back to our brother of England. For the Dauphin, I stand here for him. What to him from England? Scorn and defiance, slight regard, contempt, and anything that may not misbecome the mighty sender doth he prize you at, thus says my king. And if your father's highness does not in grant of all demands at large sweeten the bitter mockery that you sent his majesty, he'll call you to so hot an answer for it that caves and woomy voltages of France shall chide your trespass and return your mock upon second ascent of his ordinance. Say, if my father render fair return, it is against my will. For I desire nothing but odds with England. To that end, as matching to his youth and vanity, did I present him with the Paris balls. He'll make your Paris Louvre shake for it, were it the mistress court of mighty Europe. And rest assured that you will find a difference, as we his subjects have in wonder found, between the promise of his greeter days and those he masters now. Now he weighs time, even to the utmost grain. That you shall read in your losses, should he stay in France. Tomorrow you shall know our mind yet full. Dispatch us with great speed, lest the king come here himself to question our delay, for he is footed in this land already. You will soon be dispatched with fair conditions. A night is but small breath and little pause to answer matters of this consequence. 